Hey, it's Megan. Welcome back to another Dollar Tree video. This time we are doing 20 of the best ever Dollar Tree DIYs I've ever made. Best ever is a little subjective, so let me explain. Best ever means I currently or continuously display it in my home and I'm not embarrassed when someone comes over and they're like, oh yeah, I love the decor and the DIY. So it's not gonna stick out like a sore thumb or I can gift it to somebody proudly and they like it or I could even sell it online. So that's what makes the best ever in my opinion on this list and we're getting started right now. For this first DIY, you just need two of Dollar Tree's Tumbling Tower games, or heads up, right now they're selling a special value pack, which is really two for the price of one. So in this case, you only need one pack of Tumbling Tower game. And we're gonna coffee stain these. I've coffee stained wood in the past and I always get a bunch of questions, so let me answer them. Hot coffee works best. Soak it for at least 20 minutes. Sometimes I soak it, walk away for hours and forget about it. If it's not dark enough, you can just restain it. And when I do that, I just use the same coffee and I heat it up. Then some gel super glue, which can be picked up from Dollar Tree. Or you could use wood glue. I love gel super glue because of the fast dry time compared to wood glue, very strong hold. And the trick to using the gel super glue is just glue it together and then don't touch your items again. So you're gluing three of the little blocks together to make a little square. And then you're gluing your little squares together. So you have two rows of four and two rows of seven. Now I don't recommend using hot glue for this because hot glue does not absorb into the wood like wood glue or gel super glue, but technically it would work. You just wouldn't get the same exact look. Then just glue your frame together. Now all we need is one of Dollar Tree's fancy wall mirrors. <laughs> That's how they advertise them anyways. Or any frame that is eight by 10 and hot glue that to the back of your blocks. The only thing you wanna watch out for is some of the blocks will have a label on it. So just make sure that's on the back side and use some wire or twine or something to hang your mirror. And that's it, it's done. If you wanted to totally finish this, you could use some type of backing like felt or paper to finish it off. But up front, it looks great just like this. And we're on to the next one where all you need are two of Dollar Tree's wreath form packs. They come two to a pack, but we're only using three, so you will have a wreath form left over. Then the ones I got just pulled apart really easily, or you could use some wire cutters and just pull all the rings apart. And if it breaks, and no big deal, you can just duct tape it back together. So I'm using three of the small rings and then three of the larger rings. And some of Dollar Tree's rope, which is really three pieces of rope just wrapped together. Pull that apart, it's gonna make the rope last longer. We're gonna get more bang for our buck. Then just start hot gluing around your ring, but there's no need to hot glue the whole way. You just need to glue at the very start, wrap your rope around, and then glue at the very end. And that's it. You're gonna do that to all three of your rings. And when you're finished, they will look like this. Then to put our orb together, you're gonna take your first ring, put it inside your second ring, then take your third ring and push that inside the first two rings and then just kind of mold it and form it into an orb. Boom, it's done. Super quick and easy DIY that does not look like a DIY. And for the larger one, the only difference is I used a full size of rope to make it look more girthy. <laughs> And we are on to the next one. Number three, we are making this super cool riser. I love this way more than I ever thought I would. All you need is one of Dollar Tree's bamboo cutting boards and some wooden beads. I already have these on hand, but Dollar Tree does sell wooden hair beads in the hair section, so you can use those just the same. Then some gel super glue or E6000 hot glue. It really doesn't matter what glue you use. I'm using gel super glue because I wanted a longevity hold. And then some of Dollar Tree's decorative tape. I specifically got this pack because I loved the brown tape and the design on it, and it fits perfectly around the ring of the riser. I originally was thinking I would use this for a candle, but for the past, I don't know, 10 plus months, I've used it for my soap tray, soap dishes. I like this a lot better than the old tray I had because it just keeps the water from gathering up underneath it. 
Number four, we are making wicker lights. This one's also super simple. You just need two packs of Dollar Tree's decorative wicker balls, the smaller size, a pack of Dollar Tree fairy lights, and some of their beads. Now, these beads are super colorful. You'll need about two to three bags because they're different sizes, and you can string them up and spray paint them. Use a high quality spray paint for this, seriously. Don't use Walmart's 96 cent cheap spray paint. Rust-Oleum are a nicer brand, so you get full coverage and you can see that you can barely tell they were brightly colored pink, yellow, purple, green, whatever colors they were. But just to let you know, I am using beads from Amazon just because I buy these in bulk, although I am using the same size that Dollar Tree's beads come in. Anyways, all you need to do, string up your beads, I alternate at sizes just because that's what you'd have to do with Dollar Tree and then match your wicker ball up to the light, which is the only difficult part about this DIY is just making sure the wicker ball meets up with the light. Then tape the ends off with some electric tape or you could tie something around there. And these make great lights for outdoors. You wanna hang them up, use them as a vase filler during the day, but where these lights really shine is at night. <laughs> Pun definitely intended. <laughs> Number, sorry, I think I'm hilarious. Number five, we're making a cake tray where you just need one of these food containers from Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter the style. They sell these for Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, maybe Easter, and the color or style does not matter. We're only using the lid for this DIY. The lids are very, they're not sturdy at all. So to fix that problem, all we have to do is just trace it out on some cardboard or foam board a little bit of Mod Podge and apply the Mod Podge to the tray, apply your cardboard and then apply another layer of Mod Podge. And that's gonna be kind of like a paper mache where it hardens up and it'll make it more sturdy. Because we're painting this tray, just go ahead and apply a layer of Mod Podge to the top and sides too. Then any of Dollar Tree's candle holders. Seriously, it doesn't matter the style or the color, just some type of elevated candle holder and hot glue that to your cake tray. And for a more permanent hold, use gel super glue or E6000. The glue of your choice. I really can't do E6000. I know they make odorless, but eh, I'm fine. I'll just keep on using gel super glue. I like the way it works. Then just paint your tray and that's it. This is a super simple, super cheap DIY. Once again, it doesn't look like a DIY. I love, love, love this tray. Number six, we are making pillows. I've made so many pillows on my channel, so I'm just doing bare, basic, minimal here, and I'll have other ideas linked in the description. You just need two a Dollar Tree's bath mats. They're 98% cotton. Throw them in the washer and dryer. That'll get rid of the crease and the weird smell some of them have. Then just cut off the ends of your pillows. Do that to both bath mats, which are now our pillows. And then for the strips you cut, cut the seam part off. So you're gonna have four strips that look like this. Then using hot glue, just hot glue that to one of our pillows, the front side, which was the back side of the mat is now the front side of our pillow. And by the way, y'all, I just use regular hot glue, nothing special Walmart brand. Just make sure to use a high temp hot glue gun. And I have washed these pillows before. After that's done, tuck in the ends that we cut off and you are going to add the most boatloadiest boatloads of hot glue, high temp. The trick to doing this is let it cool. Do not touch it until that glue is 100% cooled. And look, I just wanna show you for real, for real, this is sturdy. So I am pulling and tugging on this as hard as I can to show you. This is a sturdy hold. And I've mentioned, you can wash these, just make sure you don't do it on, in cold, make sure you do it in cold water. Then some of Dollar Tree's yarn or some of Dollar Tree's twine and a large upholstery needle or hair sewing needle. The upholstery needles are sometimes sold at Dollar Tree. You can always find them at Dollar General. Then the seam of the pillow, we're gonna use that as a guide and we are doing a very simple blanket stitch. To make a blanket stitch, all you have to do is take your needle, go through the very bottom fabric and then through the top again. So through the bottom, through the top, and you're gonna pull that tightly until you have a little loop. You're gonna then take your needle and go through that loop. And that's it, y'all. You just repeat that over and over again, and this actually goes by really fast. You could probably sew up one side in 
five minutes. So through the bottom, through the top, through the loop, until you get to the end and you cut it off and you tie it off. If it's not perfect, that is okay. It gives it a handmade look, not like a DIY, a hot glued this together type of look. You know what I'm saying? Then the best deal I found is Dollar General sells a value pillow for $2. One value pillow will fill up two of our throw pillows. So just stuff your pillow and then blanket stitch the other side back up. And that's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you have a super cute, high-end looking throw pillow that's actually very durable, can be washed, and like I said, I've made so many of these. You can make a lumbar pillow with some tassels, you can get creative and add designs. I've made some for fall, I made one for Christmas. You can use these indoors or outdoors or however your DIY heart desires. For real though, I really love these pillows. And number seven, we are making coasters, the easiest and quickest DIY in this video, just one of Dollar Tree's Tumbling Tower games, coffee stain them like we did in the first DIY, and then glue them together. Gel, super glue, or wood glue will work for this. So you glue three of the blocks together to make a little square, and then you take four of those squares together to make a larger square. And for real, that's it. Then you just have some super cute coasters that work with hot and cold items, we have these out on our end tables in the, di not dining room, in the living room. And I love the way they look. I think this would be great for gifts too. I do eventually wanna get some cork backing. Um, I haven't been able to find it. Usually Walmart does, and I just don't wanna to go to Hobby Lobby or Michaels. And number eight, we are making a super large planter. All you need for this is one of Dollar Tree's waste baskets and some Dollar Tree rope. Now check it out, y'all. Dollar Tree is always changing up how much you're selling. So if you have the nine foot rope, you need nine pieces. If you have the 13 foot rope, you need six pieces. I ended up using some rope I got off of Amazon because it was cheaper, but it is the exact same size as Dollar Tree's rope. And I did measure to see how much exactly you would need if you wanted to do this DIY. Just start wrapping your rope all the way around your bucket, only to hot glue at the beginning and the end and stop before you get all the way up. Then you can use some of Dollar Tree's white decorative rope or heads up, Dollar General sells a hundred feet for $4, which is once again, actually a better deal. And that's what I used. Just like the regular rope, hot glue your white rope, just the beginning at the end and then cut it off when you're done. Now, because this is going to be a legit planter that I'm gonna put a real living plant in, I added drainage holes by just taking my hot glue gun and waiting for it to heat up and poke holes. <laughs> I don't know if that's great for the hot glue gun, but it worked for me, or you could use a drill or just stab it <laughs> with a knife, I guess. I did the same thing to one of Dollar Tree's itty bitty little planters. The only difference is these planters come with holes in the bottom that you're able just to poke out. So to keep from boring you, just know I did the exact same thing with this planter, except I poked the holes. And by the way, I had a lot of the rope left over, so it really is a good deal. And I did three of these planters, y'all. But, okay, so when I originally made this video, this is what they looked like the day I made them. The fo foxtail fern or whatever it's called in the very back. I did keep that outside, it's still outside. So as of the first week of December, this is what, the plant doesn't look great, but the planter itself, yes, it faded slightly, but the planter itself looks great and I'm gonna use it again next year. And for this next DIY, we are making a hanging planter and we are super simple, but we, are not gonna be super repetitive. Just know I used a Dollar Tree planter, took some of the clothesline rope, wrapped that all the way around the planter, hot gluing only at the beginning and the end where I need it to, and snatch up one of these Dollar Tree hanging planters that came just like this. That's it. And this is what this looked like the day I finished it. This is also a foxtail fern. For some reason, this one is still, it's still doing okay. So the planter itself didn't fade because it's white. The hanging planter part did, which doesn't bother me. I still like the way it looks, but I don't know why this one's still doing okay. Once again, picture was taking the first week of December, same time as the other one. And you can actually see in the bottom right corner, the other plant, which was bought the same place, same day. So I don't know what I did wrong or if it was just a, I, I don't know, I have no clue really. And now we're on to the next one. We are making a lantern. You just need two of Dollar Tree's shadow boxes. Remove the backing and then a pack of Dollar Tree's tumbling tower game again. 
The great thing about the tumbling tower game is it is the exact same width as the box frame. So just gel super glue, once again, gel super glue, or you can use wood glue just like all the other times, six locks together. And you're gonna do that four times. So you have four rows, six blocks in each row. Then take one of your shadow boxes facing up, and that's gonna be the bottom of our lantern, and just glue your blocks to the bottom of your lantern, and then glue the top on just the same way. By the way, the black ruler you guys keep seeing me use, that's actually called a square, and those are sold at Dollar Tree, and those are really great for crafting. I use that to make sure that it's as straight as possible. Now, after I glue all the, the post on, or the sticks, the Jenga blocks, I let that dry overnight just to make sure it's totally dry and cured. Then go back with some sandpaper and smooth it out, focusing on the corners and the edges, because I don't want this to look like it's six Jenga blocks glued together. I want it to look like a seamless lantern, and it does, and you'll see. So I'm using Rust-Oleum's chalked paint to paint this, and that's because for chalk paint, this is the best deal in my opinion. Chalk paint is super thick, so it helps cover in any of those cracks that were still there. So two coats of chalk paint. And then originally I did slightly dry brush this using burnt umber, but this is totally a personal preference. And by dry brushing, I just mean I dab my brush. I never have a totally wet brush. It's always, I always dab it on a paper towel or a piece of paper before I brush all over the lantern. And now there are a few spots that you can slightly see the blocks, but you'd have to really get up close and examine this. And then someone would have to really guess to figure out that this was a dollar tree DIY. Glue the bottom of one of the shadow boxes back on. And then the two pieces I pulled off from the shadow box, I hot glued that to the middle. That way you can just add your candle and some decorative florals and you have a really pretty lantern. I'd made this for fall two or three years ago. I love the way it turned out two years ago. I haven't been on YouTube for three years. Two years ago, I love the way it turned out. In fact, I loved it so much. I made another one not on my channel and this time I used seven blocks and I spray painted it black. And I really like the way this one turned out. I think it's very sleek and classy and you can just use it year round. For this next DIY, we are using more Jenga blocks, but nothing too crazy, not a bunch of gluing. We are just making a cross. So you are taking six Jenga blocks, forgive me, five Jenga blocks to make a cross, painting it white. And then I just copied Old Rugger Cross. It, it's in a book I already had and printed that off, traced out my cross, coffee stained my paper and cut it out. Then just using a regular old glue stick, glued that to my cross. It's that simple and easy. Then you just need some wooden beads. And as I've mentioned, Dollar Tree sells wooden hair beads. Or, you know, if you want a bunch of wooden beads, check out Walmart too. They usually have them on clearance, or I've seen them on clearance a few times. And some of the little tool hanging kit, the little hooks, and some of Dollar Tree's wire and just stringed up my beads. I like using Dollar Tree's wire for this because it's really easy to poke through the beads to string up, but it's bendable, but not so, it, it's bendable enough to where the necklace won't look stiff or your beads won't look stiff, but it is bendable, bendable enough or sturdy enough to where you can wrap it around the little hook that goes in the cross and it stays in place. And I love this cross. I have it on display all the time. I always have it out. It'd be cute on hooks, on a tray. The possibilities are endless. This next DIY is one of my all time favorite DIYs and it's so simple to make. Just get two matching, if possible, of Dollar Tree's thicker rugs. These are not the flimsy ones that fly away. They'll have like plastic on the back or they're super duper thick. And then just use some of Dollar Tree's brand duct tape, duct tape them together and that's it. Flip it back over, snatch up some of Dollar Tree's painter's tape and just paint out your pattern, not paint out your pattern, put the painter's tape down for your pattern. <laughs> Makes sense. And I'm not even measuring because, I mean, you could if you wanted to, but this is like simple and easy DIYs, not super measuring with science and math DIYs. And <laughs> some of Rust-Oleum's white spray paint. It's about $4 at Walmart, but by the way, you can totally use the cheap spray paint for this if you want it to. 
I like Rust-Oleums because I just need one thick coat, not like seven or eight thin coats that Walmart spray paint does, but that's just totally a personal preference. Then I reuse my painter's tape and just going the opposite way, we are going to do the same thing and spray paint again so we have like checkers. I don't wait for my paint to dry, I just pull it right off and this is what we have. Now, to get super fancy and why I really love, 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 love this DIY is because we're gonna make tassels for our rug. So in the automotive section, they have automotive cotton wire, which is supposed to be, I found out from measuring or alignment, I don't know. It doesn't matter, you know what it's for in this DIY? It's to make tassels. So just make, I actually made 32 total tassels, so 16 for each side. Just make as many tassels as you want or don't make tassels at all. And to attach our tassels, I'm just using some fishing line and stringing it through the top of the ghost head of the tassel, then tying that through the rug and just doing that all the way down. So I'm not tying off each time, I'm just looping the wire or the line through twice. You see what I'm saying there and just continue going. But people in the comments in this video did tell me you could use floss if you wanted to, which I thought was interesting. Then all my rugs, whether it's store-bought or handmade, I spray it with clear spray paint to keep it nice and keep the color right. And I wanna show you, cause I get so many questions whenever I make these rugs, like, well, how does it hold up? I bet that's gonna wipe away. No, look, check it out, y'all. This is fall. You can see slight fading. The tassels aren't as nice and bright anymore. This was the first week of Christmas or first week of December. Still, it, it's fine. These hold up great for real, just as well as any store-bought mat. And now we're making a little trivet. All you need is some brown craft paper, trace out a plate or a bowl, anything that's a circle, and then cut that out. Then you'll need one to two bags of Dollar Tree's branches, depending on how big your circle is, and then just lay that out all over the brown craft paper. Now this was probably the hardest or most frustrating or maybe even time consuming part of this DIY was figuring out how I wanted my branches to lay out and then just add a bunch of Mod Podge, which can be picked up at Dollar Tree and push it in between the branches so it soaks down to the paper. And do this on some type of plastic or I'm using reusing packing to make sure that the Mod Podge won't stick underneath. You see what I'm saying there? and I let it dry overnight. When it's dry, you can see it's super sturdy. I'm pulling and trying to bend it in half and it's not going anywhere. So this is pretty sturdy and you could use this for a million and five things, but I just use it to put candles on to keep them from heating up on a counter. But you could use it just to put a little vase of flowers on. You could use it to put a hot pan on maybe, maybe not too hot of a pan, but a pretty hot pan. <laughs> And number 14, we are making a starburst mirror, which is really, I'm really proud of how this turned out. You just need one of Dollar Tree's round mirrors and eight of their tiki bamboo torches. Walmart also sells the tiki torches. So if you can't find them at Dollar Tree, check out Walmart. It'll be around Easter time. Now I'm using a, a legit handsaw, but no need to use that. You could probably even use like a, a really strong knife or maybe even one of Dollar Tree's hand saws because you don't need to saw all the way through the stick. What you're doing is you're just scoring each side and it'll easily snap. These are really lightweight and thin, but sturdy enough for this DIY at the same time. One tiki torch does equal three pieces and I intentionally cut them at different lengths, but you could try to get them the exact same size and that would look cool too. Lay them all the way around the back of your mirror and remove the little wire twine that was holding the torch part on the top of the tiki torch. Ignore where I spray painted my frame white. I originally, well, I thought that some of the frame would show through and I wasn't sure if I had enough of the little twist ties for this, but you do. So there's no need to spray paint your mirror white. Ignore that. Boatload of hot glue, like five boatloads of hot glue and lay your mirror down. And then when that dries, hot glue it on the back too. And you could totally stop here and it looks cool just like this as is. But we had all of these little pieces left over from where the torch part, the tiki torch part was held together. So I just cut those down at different lengths and hot glued those in between each larger bamboo part. Now, when I made this DIY, a lot of people mentioned, you know what, Dollar Tree also sells uh, bamboo 
wind chimes. So that would work too if you want to pick some of those up or even the butterfly catchers, I believe some people said. So you don't have to use the tiki torches if you don't want to cut them down. And to hang this up, I just use the back of one of the tiki torches and like 12 boatloads of hot glue. So I, you could probably find a better way to put this together, but no one can tell from just looking at it straight on. And ours only cost $9. And my inspiration for this cost 24 by Urban Outfitters and theirs are only 12 inches. I really do love the way mine turned out and I have it over a bed in our house. And you've made it to number 15 where we are making some rope mirrors. I made this one of the first videos on my channel super simple and we're making these two sizes you just need another well two more of dollar trees round mirrors take some cardboard and trace out different size plates then cut those out so you're going to have two sizes like this you see what i'm saying there then some of dollar trees rope and just start wrapping the rope all the way around the cardboard pieces hot gluing when necessary after that's done Pull apart the rope because remember, it's really three pieces of rope put together. And at 10, 10 and two o'clock, two o'clock and 10 o'clock, I don't know, I'm not good at using, you see where I, I'm hot gluing the pieces, hot glue them there. And they're gonna be pointing inwards and then you're gonna hot glue the part where we're gonna hang the mirror. I'm not 100% sure my words are making sense, but I'm 100% sure you can see what I'm doing. So, and then you just hot glue that to the back. And from the front, you can't tell this was ever cardboard. We were recycled and cut out. Then all you gotta do is hot glue your mirror down. And that is it. I've had these two mirrors hanging up in a little wall in between our half bath and our stairs since I've made these. So for at least two years now, and I really love the way these turned out. Like I love, love one of my all time favorite DIYs and I can't, yeah, they'll be up there until I guess they're out of style or I don't like them anymore. And next is one of the simplest DIYs. You just need one dollar trees tens, the kind with a rope wrapped around the top. It really doesn't matter which kind or which size and then remove the rope, spray paint it or you could keep it metal if you want it to. In the back, hot glue, another little piece of twine or rope, like a loop, and then add your rope back all the way around the tin. You could tape off the rope if you want it to, but I wanted this to be really strong and sturdy and be able to hold a lot. Then one of Dollar Tree's little garden hooks, and you could use this for decor or decorative purposes and put it outside or inside and just hang flowers or some other type of decorative whatever, but I actually just use this to hold paintbrushes and other tools in my craft room. And I just like the way it looks. I think it looks really cool and it's very functional. Number 17, one of my it, super duper favorites. The only reason this cross wasn't before the other cross because I know a lot of people are too scared or they don't have a drill, but I'm telling y'all, look, this drill is a little bit under $20 at Walmart. It's great for crafting and it's about the same size as my hot glue gun. It's not scary to use. So if you don't have a crafting drill, I would really suggest that you get one for Christmas or for your birthday, Valentine's Day, whatever other holiday you get gifts for. And all you gotta do is just drill holes in the middle of the branches and it does not have to be perfect. Then one pack of Dollar Tree's wooden beads and just some twine. You don't have to use a needle. I just find it easier to string the beads and the branches. So you just do one branch, one bead, one branch, one bead. And this works out great because Dollar Tree's wooden branches comes in a pack of 19 to 21 and you get 20 beads in a pack for the wooden hair beads. After that, you can leave it as is and add tassels or you can add one of Dollar Tree's wooden crosses, which I did because I think it looks really cool. And then the opposite end, I just took some more twine, wrapped it around my fingers and made a tassel. And I, I love, love, love this DIY. I know I've said that a lot, but I need to work on my vocabulary. I tremendously like this DIY because it just makes really cool table decor. You can throw it over a stack of books or just put it on a tray, throw it on some hooks, display it however you want to. Number 18, we are making a topiary that was inspired by Kirkland's for $70. And this is a DIY that's actually not my style, but I still love it because of how it turned out. And you just need one of Dollar Tree's toy balls, some black spray paint from Walmart and spray paint all over your toy foam ball. Then you just need four of these garden bushes from Dollar Tree. But if you can't find those, just four 
from Dollar Tree. They are 97 cents and they're pretty much the same thing. So whether you're using Dollar Tree or Walmart, just cut down your stems and then you'll need some lemons. I found mine on sale at Michael's, but I know that was a while back and that won't always be on sale. So Walmart does sell them for 25 cents each and you can use those just the same. Then just take your lemons and then your greenery pick and stab that <laughs> into the bottom of your lemon. No hot glue is needed, but if you want a hot glue, you can. Then you're just gonna take your lemon greenery picks and stab them into your foam ball. Once again, no hot glue is needed. And these don't have to be super close. So you actually need a lot less than it looks. So look, this is just four of the $1 greeneries and, and it, it fills it up really well. Optional, go back with some baby's breath, cut that down and also stab that into your foam ball. And this is from Dollar Tree, but that's optional. I just liked the way it looked. That wasn't in the inspired or inspiration piece. I just thought it looked cool and I liked the little pops of white. Then Walmart sells dowel rods for less than a dollar, 62 cents. I like the three eighths of an inch or the orange size because it's still thick enough to be sturdy, but it's thin enough to where you can score it with scissors and then snap it in half with your hands. So you can cut it down to whatever size you need. Paint that with any brown, I'm using burnt umber, and just stab that into your ball. Bonus points if you wanna make it look extra real or extra cool, add some wood branches that mother nature gives away for free in your yard or your neighbor's yard. Then one of these garland branches from Dollar Tree, which is also really optional. It's a wood, it comes with greenery and like a wood looking vine and you'll have a lot left over. If you want to, you can go back and take a few of those leaves and just like hot glue that in some areas that you feel like is a little bare. But for real, just the four things of greenery will really fill up your topiary. Then just hot glue some floral foam and some rocks to weight down the bottom of your topiary. And you can put this in whatever bin or bucket you have. But if you don't have a bin or bucket, Dollar Tree sells larger planters. You can spray paint it white and add some twine to the top if you'd like. And you can use that for the bucket for your topiary. And I gave this to a neighbor and she really, really loved it. She got a lot of compliments on it. She actually liked it better than the Kirkland's. I'm not gonna lie, can I brag? I would like it better than the Kirkland's. I love the way this turned out. It's not my style, but I can still appreciate it and I really love it. And number 19 is, oh my gosh, so simple. We're making some amber soap pumps. So you just need a soap pump that is empty or you're not using and Dollar Tree's Coconut Rose Milk Body Wash, but it doesn't have to be this one. They have other body washes that come in this amber looking jar and just stick the soap pump in there. Why I love this DIY so much is because in our half bath, it's a little pedestal bath, we've had two glass soap pumps break. This, if it falls, it's not gonna break, but it still looks really cool. And I have one that has lotion in it just the same. Number 20, one of my favorite DIYs that I never actually made on my channel. The frames that are flanking my TV I made before I ever started my channel and they're Dollar Tree DIYs and I just love the way they turned out. I did make something similar for Easter so I'm gonna share how you make them. You just need one of Dollar Tree's larger 10 by 14 and smaller frames. I used burlap, but Dollar Tree options, you could use some of their tea towels or one of their tablecloths, it really doesn't matter, and cut that down to size. Remove the backing from the smaller frame measure out where you want it to be, and then just use an erasable marker, an Expo marker, and mark off where that is. Add your printout. For my pictures, I even use just regular paper to print out my photos on, and literally, I did it the exact same way. And then you just super glue your small frame to your big frame. Or you could probably use hot glue because these frames are so lightweight, it'd be okay. I just use super glue to make it more permanent. So this is what the Easter one looked like. But I did the exact same thing for my frames. The only difference is I painted the inner frame white and filled these with black and white photos of places that mean something to my husband and I. And I've had these up for over four years now and I love the way they look. No one ever comes over and like, oh, that's a cute Dollar Tree DIY. No, for real, I feel like they look high end. They were inspired by a high end photo I had found, but I wasn't about to pay $156 for three frames. Thank you so much for watching my friend and I will catch you next time.